Uh, today's lesson is going to be on, uh, the title can be marriage, uh, the wedding, however you want to put it, but something in that, in that sense. And uh, we're just going to talk about uh, true marriage, things like that. When the Bible talks about marriage and, and wedding, we're going to speak on what the Bible is, is talking about. All right, so we'll start off tonight in uh, Isaiah 54 and 1. Isaiah chapter 54 verse 1 Sing, O barren, thou that didst not bear Break forth into singing and cry aloud Thou that didst not travail with child For more are the children of the desolate Than the children of the married wife Said the Most High Okay, so barren is sterile A Sterile female all right, so basically a female that cannot have kids. So single barren, thou that does not bear. All right, break forth into singing, so rejoice and cry out loud. That thou didst not travel with child. Travel with child was you didn't have to go through no pain. All right, so you, you couldn't have kids and you didn't have to go through no pains. For more are the children of desolate. So the children are destroyed. That's what desolate means. Than the children of the married wife, said the Most High. So who is the married wife? Let's find out who the married wife is. The married wife right here is H1166. And it says Baal. To be master. So it's master. Okay, go ahead. We got uh, 54 verse 2. Enlarge the place of thy tent. And let them stretch forth the curtains of thine habitations. Spare not, lengthen thy cords, and strengthen thy stakes. So that verse right there says, stretch forth the curtains of thine habitations. So he's saying, have more kids, don't hold back. Lengthen thy cords, all right? Strengthen thy stakes. Go ahead. Verse 3. For thou shalt break forth on the right hand and on the left. And thy seed shall inherit the Gentiles and make the desolate cities to be inhabited. So your seed will inherit the Gentiles. So our seed will be around the Gentiles. We will inherit the Gentiles. So we will put in the hands of the Gentiles. We put them in the land of the Gentiles. We will scatter it out. So our seeds will inherit the Gentiles. That means the Gentiles will be all around. And the cities are desolate. All right, go ahead. Verse 4. Fear not, for thou shalt not be ashamed, neither be thou confounded. For thou shalt not be put to shame. For thou shalt forget the shame of thy youth, and shalt not remember the reproach of thy widowhood anymore. So it says, don't be ashamed, all right? Don't, don't be confounded of thy youth. Don't let nobody make the shame of you, insult you, all right? That's what confounded means, insult. All right, but don't be ashamed. All right, forget the shame that you had in your youth, because remember your reproach of thy widowhood anymore. So let's find out what widowhood. All right, so he says, you will, once you once you take away your shame, your reproach of your widowhood will no longer be there. So your widowhood, someone's a widow. Let's find out who's a widow here. All right, and, but he's telling his widow, don't be ashamed no more. Once you find out, it's true. Verse five. Verse 5, for thy maker is thine husband, the most high of hosts is his name. Huh? Say that again. 
for thy maker is thine husband. Mm -hmm. The most high of hosts is his name. And thy redeemer of the Holy One of Israel. The power of the whole earth shall be shall he be called. Go ahead. For the Most High hath called thee as a woman forsaken and grieved in spirit, a wife of youth. When thou wast refused, said the Most High. Okay. So verse 5 starts off and says, For thy maker is thine husband. So it says the Most High is thine husband. All right. It says the Most High is thy husband. And the Redeemer of the Holy One of Israel, the Most High of the whole earth shall he be called. And then it says, the Most High had called thee, a, a, thee as a woman forsaken, as greed in spirit, a wife of the youth. So it says, the Most High looks at us in, in the spirit as a woman. All right? So when, when, when he looks down on us, spirit-wise, spiritual connection, we are thy woman and he is thy husband. Okay? And it says... And a wife of youth. So from the youth, you've been the you've been the wife from the youth. You just don't know about it. You just don't have no clue about it. But that's why you remember in verse four it says, "Don't be ashamed no more, and don't let them confound you, which is insult you anymore, and put you to shame of your youth." All right, and remember your reproach. So remember what you did when you were younger. But we didn't have no clue that we were doing wrong. We didn't know we was the wife. All right. Go ahead, verse 6. Read it again. We have verse 6. For the Most High hath called thee as a woman forsaken and grieved in spirit, and a wife of youth when thou wast refused, said the Most High. So refused, said the Most High, means when he scattered us off, when he refused us away, when we wasn't following his laws and commandments, he got rid of us. Get away from me. I don't want to have nothing to do with y'all. Y'all was following these other idols. So he, he scattered us. So he refused us. All right. Go ahead. Read them. We have verse 7. For a small moment have I forsaken thee, but with great mercies will I gather thee. In a little wrath I hide, I hid my face from thee for a moment. So he said, I got upset with you. I hit my face, scattered y'all. But he said, yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to come back and get you guys. I only did this for a moment. It wasn't forever. All right. Go ahead. Finish. But with everlasting kindness will I have mercy on thee, saith the Most High thy Redeemer. For this is as the waters of Noah unto me. For as I have sworn that the waters of Noah should no more go over the earth, so have I sworn that I will not be wroth with thee, nor rebuke thee. So just like after the flood with Noah, he says, that's the last time I'll flood the earth. It will never happen again. And what was his token? The rainbow. That's why you see the rainbow in the sky. So he says, I'll give you the rainbow as my token that that flood the earth and flood the people out will never happen again. So he says, hey, same, same as Noah are my people. So the way I scattered y'all out and got y'all away from me because y'all was not following my ways, I, I, I will bring you back, though. That doesn't mean you're done forever. Okay? I still have comfort for you guys, even though I had to get rid of you. All right, let's uh, skip down to verse 17. We got Isaiah chapter 54, verse 17. It says, No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Most High. And their righteousness is of me, said the Most High. So it says right here, this is our heritage. <laughs> All right, so you, you say your heritage was lost. A lot of people don't know the heritage. They said this is the root of the heritage right here. Is knowing that the maker is thine husband. And in spirit, we are the wife. All right, so this is the heritage. So this is the root of the, the problem. This is how it starts. And, it, and once you know this, then you can be on your way. All right, let's go to Jeremiah 3 and 1. So this is our her this is the heritage of the saints of the Most High, all right, and their righteousness is of me. So that's what we just left off on. Jeremiah three and one. Go 
We at Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 1. They say, if a man put away his wife and she go from him and become another man's, shall he return unto her again? Question mark. Go ahead. Shall not that land be greatly polluted? Question mark. And it says, shall, that, shall not that land be greatly polluted? So it says, if a, no, if, if a man put away his wife and she shall go away from him and become another man's and shall return unto her and, and, and shall he return unto her again, shall not that land be greatly polluted? So we, it referred to the land as a wife. Okay? It referred to the land as a wife. So, and, and what are we? We are Israel, which what? Represents Zion. So that's why when you see Zion, the Bible it refers to her, uh, Zion as a her. All right, go ahead. I'm going to start at verse 1. They say, if a man put away his wife, and she go from him, and become another man, shall he return unto her again? Shall not that land be greatly polluted? But thou hast played the harlot with many lovers. Yet return again to me, said the Most High. So the Most High said, y'all went off to all these other lands and played the harlot, which is a whore. You went off to all these other lands and played the harlot with many lovers. And yet you, yet again, you can return to me. Because in the Most High standard, if once we go off and we deal with other people, which is the Gentiles, people of the other nations, you're considered unclean. So that's why the question right here was, if... The, if the if, if he returns unto her again, when she goes to all these other lands, she's considered unclean. But his question was, hey, I'm going to still take you back, basically, is what he's saying. He said, yet, return again to me. So he says, hey, even though you're polluted and unclean, and I know you're a whore, return again to me. So come back. Verse 2. It says, lift up thine eyes unto the high places, and see where thou has not been lain with. In the ways hast thou sat for them, as the Arabian in the wilderness, and thou hast polluted the land with thou thy whoredoms and thy wickedness. Okay, let's uh, go to verse 7. We have Jeremiah <laughs> chapter 3, verse 7. It says, And I said, after she had done all these things, Turn thou unto me, and she returned not. And her treacherous sister Judah saw it. So it says Judah saw Israel doing all these uh, all, uh, whoredom acts against the Most High. Go ahead. Verse 8. And I saw when for all the causes whereby backsliding Israel committed adultery, I had put her away and given her for giving her a bill of divorce. Yet her treacherous sister Judah feared not, but went and played the harlot also. So it says Judah ended up playing the harlot also. All right, but it says backsliding Israel committed adultery. So he had to put her away because she was put, committed adultery. And then he gave her her bill of divorce. So that's why he got rid of Israel. That's why he scattered us. And that's why up to date, Nobody know who Israel is because the Most High gave her the bill of divorce. But in his very first precept, he says, even though you, I've scattered you out and you went and became a whore with everybody else, come back home. That's what this first verse says. Return unto me, even though I've done such. All right, go ahead. We have verse 9. And it came to pass through the likeness of her whoredom, that she defiled the land and committed adultery with stones and with stocks. And yet for all of this, her treacherous sister Judah hath not turned unto me with her whole heart and fingingly saith the Most High. And the Most High said unto me. Let's break down fingingly. Fingingly is... H8267 and it's Shakur 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 which is 
S H E Q Q E R Shakur and it's untruth. Alright, read that again and put untruth right there. And we have verse 10. It says, And yet for all this her treacherous sister Judah hath not turned unto me with her whole heart, but untruth, said the most high. So she she still hasn't turned, but she's still been un, untruth. All right, go ahead. Verse eleven, and the Most High said unto me, the backsliding Israel had justified herself more than than treacherous Judah. So even though Judah was still backsliding, someone her whole heart didn't do such as Israel. So that's why Israel got more of the punishment than Judah did. Go ahead. It says, Go and proclaim these words toward the north, and say, Return thou backsliding Israel, saith the Most High, and I will not cause my anger to fall upon you, for I am merciful, saith the Most High. So it says, Go tell backsliding Judah up in the north to, to, to return, because that's where he scattered us. Most of us are here in North America. All right, go ahead. And I will not keep anger forever only acknowledge thine iniquity that thou hast transgressed against the most high thy power and has scattered thy ways to the strangers under every green tree and ye have not obeyed my voice so he said, said the most high so you you're scattered without the strangers in the lands of the strangers and you don't obey the most high's voice because you follow the ways of the strangers you follow in their idols that was the reason why he scattered us because we was already following the strangers <coughs> idols so he says hey since you don't want to hearken to my word and you want to follow their idols get out of here so once he scattered us now we're really not obeying his voice now it's like the doo -doo -doo, you know Go ahead. You have 14. Right. Verse 14. Turn, O backsliding children, saith the Most High, for I am married unto you. I am married unto you. So the Most High says, come back, because I am married unto you. What's his marriage to us? The covenant. The covenant to the children of Israel. So he says, come back, because I am married to you. So he is pleading. To, he's like come back and and, and 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 like I said in the custom of, of, of the most high usually once you go off and you be with another nation and you consider them clean you can't come back so he's trying to show you right here that he has much love for us because he's telling you to come back come back all right go ahead and I will all right we're at 15 no uh, Read, read, uh, and I will. Yeah. And I will bring you to Zion. All right, and I will bring you to Zion. So people say, well, when we flee America, where are we supposed to go? Where are you supposed to go? You, this is where we end up eventually. You end up in Zion. All right. Let's uh, jump to 17 and read 17 to 20. We're at verse 17. At that time, they shall call. Jerusalem, the throne of the Most High, and all nations shall be gathered unto it. All, so Jerusalem is the place. So that lets you know right now that the people that reside in Jerusalem right now are not the true people. Because he's telling you right here, O Israel, come back. You are married unto me because the people that are there right now are not my, is not my wife. They're perpetrators. All right, go ahead. And, uh, I'm going to start at 17 again. Mm -hmm. At that time, they shall call Jerusalem the throne of the Most High, and all nations shall be gathered unto it, to the name of the Most High, to Jerusalem. Neither shall they walk any more after the imagination of their evil heart. So he says right now, when you're in these other lands, you're walking at the imagination of your evil heart. So what's imagination? Something that is glamorous, it looks good, so you think you're doing the right thing. Uh, you've been taught from a kid that everything that you're doing is right. So it's your imagination of the evil heart, though. The evil heart is the, the these idols of these other lands. Have nothing to do with the Most High. All right, go ahead. We are 18. In those days, the house of Judah 
shall walk with the house of Israel, and they shall come together out of the land of the north to the land that I have given for an inheritance unto you unto your fathers. So we already know all the land back east is ours. All right, and it tells you I'm going to gather Judah and they shall walk with the house of Israel. So that lets you know right there that Judah is the head of Israel. So Judah has to wake up and get everything going to get Israel ready. All right, Judah and everybody else follows. Go ahead. We got 19. But I said, how shall I put thee among the children and give thee a pleasant land? a goodly heritage of hosts of nations. And I said, Thou shalt call me my father, and shalt not turn away from me. Surely as a wife treacherously departeth from her husband, so have ye dealt treacherously with me, O house of Israel, saith the Most High. Alright, so he says, We have departed from him, just like a, a wife would depart from her husband. O house of Israel. Let's talk to us. Let's go to Hosea 2 and 20. <coughs> so why everybody find a spot? Follow the story now. I mean, it's saying here that the maker is thine husband, and we are the wife in spirit. Okay? We are the wife in spirit, which we have went off and uh, slept around with other Nations and other people. So that's what it's saying right here. Hosea, Hosea 2 and 20. Okay. Go ahead. Right, Hosea 2 and 20. It says, I will even betroth thee unto me in faithfulness, and thou shalt not know the most high. All right, so betroth is H781. Is Aras, Aras, which is A R A S, and it means engage, spouse, engage, spouse. So put engage there. Go ahead. It says, verse 20, Hosea 2 and 20, and I will even engage thee unto me in faithfulness. So this is so he's this is the engagement. So he tells you right here, I'm going to engage you through faithfulness. All right. So faithfulness is what the spirit. So he says I'm going to engage you through the faithfulness. All right. That's how that's how the engagement works All right. through faithfulness, which is through the spirit. All right. Let's go to Hosea two and sixteen. Okay. We have Hosea two and sixteen. And it shall be in that day, saith the Most High, that thou shalt call me Ishi, and shalt call me no more Baal. So right here it says, in that day, so in the last days, thou shalt call me Ishi, and no more Baal. Ishi is H376, which means husband. Okay? 376 is husband. Alright? But when you when you break Ishi down some more and you go to H 3469 okay H 3469 is let me get it up for you guys but as you see right here it says in the last days you shall call me Ishi alright which means husband then Ishi refers to you in Hebrew 3469, all right, which is Yishi, which is Y I S H I Y. So that's what it is.
Sorry, sorry about that. So like I say, she is she is 376, which is husband. But then uh, husband is referred to H3469, which is Yishi, which is Y-I-S-H-Y. So it's the same as Ishi, which is Yishi, and it means saving. And this is from H3467. And H3467 gives you Yeshaya, Yesha, which is Y-A-S-H-A. And it means to be safe, avenging, defend, deliver, salvation, savior, get victory. So Yesha, Yeshaya means salvation, savior, get victory. So read 2 and 16 again. We had 2 and 16. <clears throat> says, And it shall be in that day, said the Most High, that thou shalt call me Ishi, and call me no more Baal. So we broke it down. Ishi means husband. All right, but when you break it down, it means Yeshaya, which means Savior, which is salvation. Let's go to 1 Corinthians uh, 6 and 16. Corinthians 6 verse chapter 6 excuse me verse 16 what know ye not that he which is joined to a harlot is one body for two saith he shall be one flesh all right so it says know ye not that he which is joined to a harlot which is a whore is one body for two said he shall be one flesh. So he says he's joined to a, a harlot, which is a whore, which is one body. It's all one. All right, at the end of the day. Because why? He's the husband and we're the wife. So he said he's joined to an harlot. And it's one body. All right, verse 17. But he that is joined unto the Most High is one spirit. Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body. But he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of the Most High, and ye are not your own, for ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify the Most High in your body and in your spirit, which are the Most High. So it says right here, the Holy Spirit is in you. All right, and this is not your body. All right, so the Holy Spirit is working through you. All right, and it says you have been bought for a price. Okay, so let's find out what they're talking about. Let's go to uh, the Ecclesiastes and the Apocrypha. Here is an extra one if someone needs it. You can read it with, with, with her, show her what that is. Uh, can you hand me my other one from my other uh, the garage, please? Thank you. So let's find out what it what it's saying right here in verse 19. It says, What know ye not that your body is, is the temple of the Holy Spirit, which is in you? So that the, your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, which is in you, which ye have of the Most High, and ye are not your own. So it's not even yours, all right? You have been bought for a price. So let's read and find out exactly what this information is uh, saying to us and what it brings to us. Yeah, yeah. You uh you uh you guys can share that. You know how to use that, you know where to go? she can probably show you, Gloria can probably show you. Alright, we're gonna go to uh Ecclesiastes twenty four and eight. Actually we'll start at uh twenty four and one. We'll start at Ecclesiastes twenty four and one. So now, this will make a whole lot of sense on why uh, the, the Most High is referring to us as 
his wife in spirit. Okay? Ecclesiastes 20, 24 and 1. Y'all have some luck. Sit, sit with sit with her so she can uh, see what see where that's coming from what that's saying oh. yeah. mm -hmm. yeah, kind of sitting middle square. Mm -hmm. okay all right so I'm gonna read this last part Corinthians 19 says what know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit which is in you which ye have of the most high and ye are not your own. All right, go ahead, Ecclesiastes 24 and 1. We're at Ecclesiastes 24, verse 1, chapter 24, verse 1. It says, Wisdom shall praise herself and shall glory in the midst of her people. So it says, Wisdom shall praise herself and glory in the midst of her people. So wisdom is the Holy Spirit. All right, the Holy Spirit is wisdom, and it says her. She shall praise herself. Go ahead. In the congregation of the Most High, shall she open her mouth and triumph before his power. I came out of the mouth of the Most High and covered the earth as a cloud. So she said she came out of the mouth of the Most High, so that lets you know she sits on the throne with him. She said, I came out of his mouth and I covered the earth as a cloud. Go ahead. We're at verse 4. I dwelt in high places and my throne is in a cloud, cloudy pillar. I alone can pass the circuit of heaven. Okay. So jump down to uh, verse 8. Sorry about that. Jump down to verse 8. Good. Verse 8. So the creator of all things gave me a commandment, and he that made me caused my tabernacles to rest, and said, Let thy dwelling be in Jacob, and thy inheritance in Israel. So wisdom said that the Most High gave her a commandment, just like he gave all of us commandments. He, so she, she said... The creator of all things gave me a commandment and he caused my tabernacle to rest and he said, let thy dwelling place be in Jacob, which is the inheritance of Israel. So she said that the Most High said, hey, go rest with the Israelites, which is Israel. You dwell with them. All right. And that's where you rest. Why? Because she is to come wake us up. So the Holy Spirit sits with us. She's sitting with us from the beginning, whether you realize it or not. And why? Because that's what her commandment was. Okay? So now that we know her commandment was that, go back to uh, 1 Corinthians 6 and 19. So now that we know that wisdom's commandment was to come sit with us, all right, dwell with Israel. So this is why verse uh, Corinthians 6 and 19 says what it says. All right, read it. We have 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19. What know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of the Most High, and ye are not your own? So it says your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, because she is in you. So what we read in the Apocrypha says she dwells in us. So that's when you put the two and two together, that's what's going on here. The Holy Spirit, she dwells in you. All right, now let's go to stand in the Apocrypha and let's go to Wisdom of Solomon. And we're going to go to chapter 7, verse 25. And we read these couple of verses just to show you one other thing. So, Wisdom of Solomon. Wisdom of Solomon, uh, Solomon chapter 7, verse 25. Right. So, we just found out that Wisdom's commandment was to go dwell with the house of Israel, which is Jacob. Her inheritance is Israel. So the Most High says, hey, you want something? This is what you got. You got Israel. That's what you have to worry about. Okay, so now let's read, read right here. Go ahead. Let them know where you're at. We're in uh, Wisdom of Solomon, chapter uh, 7, verse 25. It says... For she is the breath of power of the Most High, 
and a pure influence flowing from the glory of the Almighty. Therefore can no undefiled thing fall into it. For she is the brightness of the everlasting light, the unspotted mirror of the power of the Most High, and the image of His goodness. So it says she is the bright brightness of the everlasting light, and she is the unspotted mirror of the Most High. So when the Most High looks at himself in the mirror, he sees himself, but he don't. Just like when I look at myself in the mirror, I see the image of a woman, a woman we kind of have the same built, but they were not the same. So it's kind of unspotted mirror. So that's what it's saying. Wisdom, she kind of, she's the same as the Most High. Go ahead. 27. And being but one, she can do all things. And remaining in herself, she maketh all things new. And in all ages entering into the holy souls, she maketh them friends of the Most High so and prophets. So it says wisdom, she enters into all holy souls. So just like we said, her commandment was to go dwell with people, which is the Israelites. And so it says right here, she enters into all holy souls and she makes them friends with the Most High and the prophets. Who is the Most High and the prophets? The prophets is this Old Testament. So everybody in the Old Testament are your prophets. So it says that wisdom enters into all holy souls and she makes them friends with the most high and the prophets. So that's why I love this Bible so much because she is now in me. She sits with me and now I'm friends with Daniel, Ezekiel, Isaiah, Jeremiah. You no, know, I love it. You know, so she gets in me and she gives me the wisdom and the knowledge to go learn who these guys is and make them my friends. Read that part again. We're at 27. Mm -hmm. And being but one, she can do all things. And remaining in herself, she maketh all things new. And in all ages, entering into holy souls, she maketh them friends of the Most High and prophets. Mm -hmm. For the Most High loveth none but him that dwelleth with wisdom. So the Most High love anybody that dwells with wisdom. Go ahead. For she is more beautiful than the sun, and above all the order of the stars. Being compared with the light, she is found before it. For after this cometh night, but vice shall not prevail against wisdom. Read 8, verse 2. Read 8, 1 and 2. Chapter 8, verse 1. Wisdom reacheth from one end to another. Mightily and sweetly doeth she order all things. I loved her and sought her out from my youth, and I desired to make her my spouse, and I was a lover of her beauty. So the Most High says right here that, so the Most High says right here in 8 and 2, I loved her and sought her from my youth. So I loved her from my youth, and I, I checked her out from my youth. All right, I desire to make her my spouse. So the Most High said he made wisdom his spouse. So that's why when you read in Genesis 1 and 26, when he said, let us make man in our image, that's who he's talking to. He wasn't, who else do you think he's talking He's talking to wisdom. He said, hey, let us make man in our image. Genesis 1 and 26, this is who he's talking to. So it says, I, I made her my spouse, and I was a lover of her beauty. Okay, so the Most High says wisdom is his spouse. So that now let's go back to here, uh, Corinthians 6 and 19. So that's why it says wisdom, all right, is the temple which is in us. So if she's in us and she dwells with us, so if her commandment was to come dwell with us, now you see why in the spirit we are the wife? Because he sent his wife down here to chill with us. So it makes it easy for him to come say, all right, my wife from my, my youth, I loved her from since she was this big. I sent her to dwell with y'all. So now you guys, this is my covenant. I got to pay attention y'all. You guys are now my wife in spirit because my wife is dwelling with y'all. All right, right? All right, let's get to the next part. Let's go to Ephesians 5 and 32. So now, now that we're getting the concept that the most, the most high, the maker, is the husband. But then he said in the, in the later days, we just read in Hosea 2 and 16, he said in the later days he's going to send his son, which is Yeshaya, 
And Yeshaya becomes the husband. Ishi means husband. So Yeshaya becomes a husband. So now that Christ, and Yeshaya means what? Savior, salvation. So now that we know Christ is the husband, and now we're the wife in spirit, all right? Now we're going to get to the meat and potatoes on why things is the way they are. Ephesians 5 and 32. We had Ephesians. Chapter 5, verse 32. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. So it says it's a great mystery. Why is it a great mystery? Because you have to understand the marriage uh, the marriage uh, relation was as a representation between the Most High and Israel. So that's why it's a mystery. So the marriage relation was a representation of the Most High in Israel. But today when you use marriage and everybody else use marriage, they use it for something completely different. It don't have nothing to do with what's going on right here. And remember what we read in Isaiah 54. He said, this is our heritage. So this is the root. You got to know this to even know what your heritage is. You have to know you are the wife in spirit. All right, go ahead. Ephesians 5 uh, 32, read that again. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Okay, so let's, uh, let's get to Genesis 2 and 21. So now that we know Christ in the later days, which is Ishi, is the husband, Christ is the spirit, all right, with the church, all right? So that's why when you see a lot of things going on with the church, Christ has a marriage with the church spiritually, Okay. Now, right now, we're going to talk about the original marriage. There was an original marriage, and we'll talk about it and what happened to it. Genesis 2 and 21. Genesis chapter 2, verse 21. And the Most High Power caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. And he slept, and he took one of his ribs, and closed up the flesh instead, of, instead thereof. And the rib which the Most High had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto man, unto the man. Okay. So this right here is talking about the first marriage. Okay. When Adam fell into a deep sleep. All right. So it says when he fell into a sleep, deep sleep, he took one of the ribs and closed his eyes. All right. And upon the flesh and stepped thereof. All right. Go ahead, where is that? Verse uh, 22 or uh, 23? Go ahead and get to 23. You read 22. Okay. It says, you read verse 23. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. And she, she shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife. And they shall be one flesh. Okay, so it says, so this says right here that we all know Eve came from Adam. Okay, so now I'm a, we're going to break down some information. Let's go to woman in verse 23. So woman in verse 23. Okay, so woman is H802. And it's Ishaya. Ishaya, all right, which is I S H S H A H. Okay, so woman is Ishaya, and then let's go to uh, man in verse twenty two. Man in verse 22 is H120. And it's Adam. So read. So read verse 22 again. So now that we know man in verse 22 means Adam. Which is H. So man right here in verse 22 represents H120 and it's Adam. Read that again. It says... And the rib which the Most High hath taken from Adam made he a woman, and brought her unto the, unto Adam. And Adam said, This is now bones of my bones, and flesh of my flesh. 
and she shall be called. No, just say woman. Okay, woman. Because he was taken out of a man. So, okay. So, man right here in verse 23 is a different man from verse 22. Man in verse 22 is H120. Man in verse 23 is H376. Okay? We already broke down H376, which was Ishi, which was husband, which is Yeshayah. So, man in verse 23 says... And she shall be called woman because she shall be taken out of man, which is Ishi, not Adam. Okay, now read 24. Verse 24. There shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. So now that we know man in 23 represents Ishi, therefore shall a man leave his father so now a higher I mean so now Yeshaya is gonna leave a higher and, and wisdom and cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. So we talking right here with so so a lot of people though they talk about this whole marriage thing and cleave one and, and this is a lot of a lot of this is a scripture that a lot of people come to, but the scripture is talking about Yeshaya when he leaves his mother and his father and cleave unto his wife. And who was his wife? Israel. So Christ was already being uh, uh, somewhat represented and symbolized right when Eve was born. All right. So you got to understand uh, when Eve was born, it's almost like a symbolization of Christ's death. Because even when Christ was, when Christ died, that's when the church came about. So now when the church come about, the church now becomes his wife. All right, and that's why we all have to do everything accustomed to the church. That's why he talks about the church so much, the church being one body. And we'll, we'll jump into that uh, right now. But let's jump back into uh, Isaiah 54 and 6 real quick. So now that we know woman means ish, isha, ishi itself, isha, ishaya almost, almost like Isaiah and issue together but Ashaya so now we know woman almost means almost the same thing as a uh, husband uh, we're going to break down some more information on the, the marriage part go back to Isaiah 54 and 6 let's read it we got Isaiah 54 and 6 for the Most High hath called thee as a woman forsaken and forgiven in spirit, and a wife of you when thou was refused, said the Most High. Okay, so he says it's the wife that was refused. Okay, so this is the reason why Christ had to come down here because the wife was refusing. So he had to send his son down here to cleave on to the wife. Alright, because the wife was refusing. Alright, but... Like we read in Isaiah 54 earlier, it says we was a widow from the start. We didn't know we was a widow, so it says don't be ashamed. Just come back home. Okay? Let's go to Matthew 22 and 1. Matthew 22 and 1. So... We have to understand when verse 25 in Genesis was talking about Christ leaving his father, it was giving us the opportunity to, to, to allow us to be a part of Christ through his blood. All right, It was giving us the opportunity to be made his spouse through the spirit right there at that moment. Okay? All right, Matthew 22 and uh, 1. Right, Matthew chapter 22 verse 1. And Christ answered, and spake unto them again by parable, and said, The kingdom of heaven is like an uncertain king. Well, let's break down parables real quick. Okay? Um, I don't really think a lot of people really know what parables mean. Okay? Uh, but the Greek de de definition will tell you parable means an illusion. Uh, a comparison of something which is somewhat true 
that's what the Greek de definition tells you that compare uh, a parable means comparison or illustration which is almost true they give you kind of the, the, the you know but when you parables in Hebrew means comparing earthly truths expressed with heavenly truths to be understood that's what parables mean I'm gonna say it again parable means comparing earthly truths express with heavenly truths to be understood so when Christ talks in parables he's actually speaking of true things that happens in the kingdom but he speaks in parables why let's find out why Christ speaks in parables let's go to uh, uh, Matthew 13 and 9 real quick let's find out why he speaks in parables So he started where we were just at in Matthew 22, off with the parable. A lot of times in his precepts, he would start off saying, I'm speak to them in parables. A lot of times he will. Sometimes he don't. Sometimes he will. He'll let you know when this information right here is parable, he'll let you know that this is basically how it's to be done and how it's going to look in the kingdom. All right, Matthew 13 and 9. Go ahead. Matthew chapter 13, verse 9. Who have ears to hear, let him hear. So he says, anybody that has ears, let them hear what I'm about to say. Because everybody won't get this. All right. And we're at 10. And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? So this is when he started speaking in parables. And when the disciples realized, they asked, Why are you, why are you doing such all of a sudden? All right, go ahead. And he answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you. To know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But to them it is not given. So he said it's given to you guys to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But to these guys they will not know it. So you guys y'all know the mysteries that happen in the kingdom. Alright go ahead. For whosoever hath to him shall be given. And he shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not from him shall be taken away. Even that he hath. Mm -hmm. Therefore speak I to them. In parables, because they seeing, see not, and hearing, they hear not, neither do they understand. And in them is fulfilled in the prophecy of Isaiah. So right here he says, I'm going to speak to them in parables because they don't understand anything anyway. They don't see nothing, they don't hear nothing, they don't understand anything anyway, so now I'm going to speak to them in parables. All right, and he said, and it's the same thing that was filled in the prophecy of Isaiah, which is Isaiah. Let's go to Isaiah 6 and 9 to show you what he's saying. Isaiah 6 and 9. So he said the same thing that was said in Isaiah 6, in Isaiah, but it's Isaiah 6 and 9. So Christ said, I'm going to speak to, to them in parables anyway, because when it's normal, they still don't see it. They still don't hear it. They still don't understand it. So since I see all this shenanigans going on and they don't want to pay attention, I'm going to speak to him in parables and make it a little more difficult. Okay? Go ahead. We're at uh, Isaiah 6 and 9. It says, And he said, Go and tell this people, Hear ye indeed, but understand not, and see ye indeed, but perceive not. Ten. Make the heart of this people fat, and make their ears heavy, and shut their eyes. Lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and convert and be healed. So this happened back in Isaiah's time that all this happened to us. It was almost one of the curses. He said, tell the people, hear ye indeed, but understand not. And he says, make the heart of these people fat. He says, make this happen to them. So they didn't have a choice to have heavy ears and eyes shut. Okay, they didn't have a choice. So they haven't understood nothing for a long time. So that's why they wasn't understanding when Christ came around. They still wasn't understanding. So they said, now I'm going to talk to them in parables. Since they don't understand, now I'm going to talk to these people in parables. All right? Uh, so now that we know he said he was going to speak to them in parables because they knew nothing of what he was saying, let's go back to Matthew 22. Matthew 22 and 1. It 
So uh, once again, parable in Greek means comparison. I guess that's that's simple. You'll never really put together what it really means, but they tell you, but they just not tell you. But but parable in Hebrew means comparing earthly truths expressed with heavenly truths to be understood. So now when we read this right here, now we understand what where Christ is coming from. Christ is explaining to these people what's to happen in the kingdom. All right, go ahead. We're on Matthew 22, verse 1. And Christ answered and spake unto them again by a parable, and said, The kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king, which made a marriage of his son. So it says, The kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king, which made a marriage for his son. So it says the, the, the kingdom is preparing a marriage for the son. That's what this just said. All right, go ahead. And sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the wedding, and they will not come. So he says he called forth the servants to bid them to the wedding, and they would not come. So right here is talking about coming out to people and trying to wake them up to the truth and let them know what's going on. They don't want to hearken. They don't want to listen. So that means they don't want to come. He's, he's getting the wedding ready. He says, hey, I sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the wedding. So now we're at the wedding part. So now that we know where the wife and who the husband is, now we're at the wedding part. And he says now we're trying to get people to come to the wedding. And they wouldn't come. All right, go ahead. Again, he sent forth other servants saying, tell them which are bidden, behold, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fatlings are killed, and all things are ready. Come unto the marriage. All right, so he's saying, hey, everything's prepared. Tell them to come to the marriage. All right? I have prepared the dinner. Everything's ready to go. Just tell them to come. Just tell them to get here. But remember in the beginning, he was saying, he was, he was telling us, hey, y'all whores, y'all been out, y'all harlots. Just come back home, but we don't want to come back home. So he's telling them, it's, it's prepared. Who's going to come? All right, go ahead. We're at 25? I mean, uh, 5? Yeah. But we're at Matthew 22, verse 5. But they made it, made light of it, and went their ways. So they, they took it lightly. They didn't want to take it to heed. They didn't want to be like, well, I'm no wife. Why am I going to get prepared for this marriage you're talking about? I, I'm not in it. Why are you telling me about this wedding? Don't got nothing to do with me. When it has everything to do with you, you're the wife. So the servants are coming out trying to get you to the marriage. Why? Because you're the wife. Every, you, you, all of us, you're the wife. But if it says, hey, you have nothing to do Hey, I don't want to have nothing to do with it. So they didn't want to have nothing to do with the services coming out, trying to get everybody to come to the wedding, and nobody wanted to come. All right, go ahead. Let me start that far. But they made light of it and went their ways, one to his farm, another to his merchandise. And the remnant took his servants and entreated them spitefully and slew them. But when the king heard thereof, he was wroth. And he sent forth his armies and destroyed those murderers and burned up their city. Mm -hmm. Then said to, he to his servants, The wedding is ready, but they which were bidden were not worthy. So the people we were trying to get the wedding for, they were not worthy. All right, so he's to get rid of them. So go ahead. Nine. It says, Go ye therefore into the highways, and as many as ye shall find, bid to the marriage. So those servants went out into the highways and gathered together all as many as they found, both bad and good. And the wedding was furnished with guests. And when the king came, came in to see the guests, he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment. So he told the servants, don't worry about these other guys that we were worried about. Go in the highways and, and, and gather as many as you can find, both bad and good ones, and bring them to the wedding. All right? 
And he said, and the wedding was furnished with guests, so they got people to finally come in there. And when the king came in, he saw that there was a man with no wedding garment on. All right, go ahead. Verse 12. And he saith unto him, Friend, how camest thou in hither not having wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then said the king to the servants, Bind him hand and foot, and take him away, and cast him into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and garnishing of teeth. All right, so it says, the dude, that, the guy that was in there with no the wedding garment, said, how can you be in here without the wedding garment on? And the guy was speechless. So they says, get rid of him, basically. Tie him up and get rid of him. So now the servants went out and they found all the good ones and the bad ones. So all the believers, they found all the believers, no matter if they were good and bad, and they brought them to this wedding. Told them, hey, you're Israel, wake up. This is your wedding. Come here. Those people believe. But then you had someone sit sitting in here that didn't believe. And this is the guy that didn't have a wedding garment on. He didn't believe that he was a part of this wedding. He didn't believe he was a wife, so he didn't. He wasn't prepared. Everybody else believed, so they had their garment on ready to get married. This guy standing in there without his garment on, he's a non-believer. So they said, why are you even in here? Get rid of him. So that's what that's referring to right there. A guy, a non-believer, that's made his way in there, and once he finally gets in there, he has he's speechless. He's speechless on why he's even in there. Okay, now let's go to 1 Corinthians 11 and uh, 1. Let me just read that. First Corinthians chapter 11 verse 1 be ye followers of me even as I also am of Christ now I praise you brethren that ye remember me in all things and keep the ordinances as I delivered them to you but I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ and the head of the woman is the man and the head of Christ is the most high okay so it says right here that every man uh, the head of every man is Christ so Christ is on the head of every man all right and then the head of every woman is man all right and then and then and then the head of Christ is the most high okay so that's your order all right so this is how you get the wife so through the spirit that he's talking to he's talking to man he says man you are my wife through spirit. So the man is the wife through spirit. And then the wife is, is the connection through the man, which makes one. So that's why when you always read and it says, man, take your wife and make her one flesh. Because she is now part of you, which is the wife in spirit. It can't be two. You can't be the wife and, and I'm the wife. We both can't be the wife. No, so he says, make, make it one because he's the wife. So you're the head of her. She's now one with you. So now both of y'all are considered the wife in the spirit. Okay. All right. Let's go to Revelations 19 and 7. We got about uh, 15 minutes left. Maybe 20. Revelations 19 and 7. So now that we know the wedding is prepared. All right. Now remember, we just read in, in Matthew 22 where it says, we, and that was Christ talking, right? All that was all red. So that was Christ talking. Okay? And, and at the beginning of that, Christ says, I'm going to say this in parables. You remember at the beginning of that? He said, I'm, I'm going to speak this half in parables. So everything we just read right there in Matthew 22 is what's really going to happen in the kingdom. That's what's really going to happen in the kingdom. And it was talking about a marriage being prepared and a wedding being ready. But this is what the Romans, they took this right here. And they customized their weddings and their things off of this. And this is not what this precept was telling people to go do. Have weddings and get married and stuff. No, this was a parable talking about 
what Christ was preparing. That's why that first verse says the kingdom is being prepared for a marriage for the son, for the son, not for all y'all. This ain't how you're supposed to do it. It's talking about here. Okay. Revelation uh, uh, 19 and 7. Right, Revelation chapter 19 verse 7. <coughs> Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him. For the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready. So it says, prepare yourselves. All right, so it's talking, who is it talking about? It's talking about us. All right, and it says, let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him. For the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife has made herself ready. So she's ready. So these are all the people when we was talking about, uh, go get the people, the good and the bad ones. And bring him in because the wedding is ready. And remember the guy that they had a garment on? Get out of here because he wasn't ready. But it says now she has made herself ready because they went out and got the people. So now the people are waiting in their garment, waiting on the lamb, which is who? Christ to come back, which is who? Ishi, which is who? Yeshia, the husband. So it says they're ready. They're made ready. All right. Let's go. Verse, uh, verse 8. We have verse 8. And to her was granted that she should not be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. For the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. Go ahead, verse 9. And he saith unto me, Right blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, These are the true sayings of the Most High. So it says, verse uh, 9, it says, it says, Right blessed. Are they which are called unto the marriage, the supper of the Lamb. So everybody ain't going to be called. Certain people are going to get turned away. We heard, we seen the one guy get turned away. Everybody ain't going to be called to the marriage. All right. Revelation 21 and 2. We have Revelations 21, verse 2. It says, And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from the Most High out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. So John says, I, see a, I saw a, a holy city in New Jerusalem. So not the Jerusalem that you see there right now. The Jerusalem that you see there right now is false. Those people are not the true people. So just, and this is revelations. So this lets you know that the Jerusalem that we see today in our eyes is false. Because John says he see a new one coming. And what's the new one? All right, coming down from the Most High out of heaven, prepared as a bride. So who is Jerusalem? It's us, Israel, coming back home. And we're prepared as a bride. Okay? Waiting for her husband. All right? So that's what that's saying right there. So you have to understand your heritage is you being the wife and your whole time here on earth you're preparing yourself to be ready for Christ okay all right let's go to revelations 21 and 9 we are 21 verse 9 and there came unto me one of the seven angels which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues, and talk with me, saying, Come hither, I will show thee the bride of the Lamb's wife. So an angel says, Hey, you guys, come here. Hey, I'm going to show you the bride of the Lamb's wife. All right, go ahead. Read it to uh, verse 9. I mean, uh, uh, 12. We had 10. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great high mountain, and showed me that a a great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from the Most High, having glory, having the glory of the Most High, and her light was like a unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as a crystal, mm -hmm. and had a wall great and high, and t had twelve gates, at the gates twelve angels, and names written thereon. 
which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. So the angel in verse 9 says, hey, come unto me. All right. And it says, and I will show you the bride of the lamb. All right. The lamb's wife. He says, I'm going to show you her. Okay. And then verse 12 says, and in which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. So the 12 tribes of the children of Israel is the wife of the lamb. That's what that just said. Okay. And the angel says, come here, let me show you. All right. Let me show you who it is. Okay, y'all don't know who it is? Let me show you. Alright, let's go to Revelation 7 and 9. So we go back to Revelation 7 and 9. Alright, go ahead. 7 and 9. 7 and 9. I mean, I, we, we're going to nine because everybody in here knows seven through eight. By heart. We should know it by heart. We beat it over the head with a stick. So everybody in here should know uh, the first eight verses by heart almost. So, so, so go ahead and go to nine. We're at Revelation 7 verse 9. After, the, after this I beheld and lo, a great multitude which no man could number of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues stood before the throne. And before the lamb cloth with white robes and palms in their hands. So this is talking about the twelve tribes, which is the, the the bride of the lamb. And it says it's coming as a great multitude. So the great multitude and a number and all nations and kindred tongues which stood before him. So it's a big number. So it's talking about all the twelve tribes. And then when it speaks of uh, uh, the, the other nations and kindreds and tongues, it's talking about the Gentiles that decided to wake up right at the end and become a part of this. So that's where the net, the numbers grow right here because the Gentiles, right at the end, they say, hey, we see what's going on here and they wanted a part of the truth. So that's why the number grew because at the beginning of this, it told you that the number was 144,000, which is the tw uh, 12 tribes of Israel, 12,000 from each tribe. But then by the time it got to verse 9, the number grew because of the people Harken into the word which was the Gentiles at the end of all of this. All right. Now let's. Uh, so the white robes that is talking about in verse nine. That's your wedding garment. All right. The white robe. So read the white. Uh, read that last part uh, in verse nine. It says. Before the throne and before the lamb cloth with white robes in palms in their hands. So, so the white robes is our garment. All right. So it says the 12 tribes will have their white robes and palms in their hands. Well, there's palms in their hands. So when they come in, so when they're on their way back to Jerusalem, which is the new Jerusalem, they're going to be coming in white robes and palms in their hands. Palms in their hands mean this. They're coming there because they're rejoicing and their hands are, the palms of their hands are showing. So that's why it describes palms in their hands because it's showing the palms of their hands as they're coming back and rejoicing. Okay? Let's hit one more. Uh, let's hit a, a precept. That's, we got like three more precepts. Let's go to Amos 9 and 11. So let's see this number that we talk about is 7 and 9. Because remember, in, in, in beginning of 7, it tells you that there was 12,000 from each tribe. All right, 12 tribes, which is 144,000. But by you get by the time you get to verse 9, it says, hey, this number is bigger. All right, a number that no man could really number because you got all the nations here now. So now you got the 12 tribes and you got all these nations. And there was a number that no man could number. So let's see why the number grew once he gathered the 12 tribes. All right, Amos 9 and 15. I mean, 9 and 11. We have Amos chapter 9, verse 11. Actually, start at uh, 8. Start at 9 and 8. Amos chapter 9, verse 8. Make sure everybody's there. Everybody's there. Mm -hmm. Behold, the eyes of the Most High power are upon the sinful kingdom, and I will destroy it from off the face of the earth, saving that I will not utterly destroy 
the house of Jacob, said the Most High. So he said he's upon the sinful kingdom, which is North America, which is America. He said he's upon it. It's a sinful kingdom. And he says he will not utterly destroy the house of Jacob. So he's going to destroy a lot of Jacob, but not all of them. All right, go ahead. We're at nine. For lo, I command and I will sift the house of Israel among all nations like, a corn, like as corn is sifted in a seed. Yet shall not the least grain fall upon the earth. So he says, I will destroy the, the sinful kingdom, but yet I will sift Israel. I will waver them. All right. I will wander them. I will remove them. Uh, the house of Israel among all nations. So I will, I will remove Israel from among all nations as like corn is shifted in the seed. So when corn is gathered, it's a lot of it, right? People don't just uh, uh, gather corn and, and send off a couple kernels. No, that, that, that'd be loads and loads and loads of corn going when they send that corn from them farms. So that's what he said. He's going to do the same with Israel when they go gather. All right, nine. Where nine says, For lo, I will command and I will sift the house of Israel among all nations like as corn is sifted in a seed. Yet shall not the least grain fall upon the earth. And all the sinners of my people shall die by the sword which say the evil shall not overtake nor prevent us. In that day I will raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen, and close up the breaches thereof. And I will raise up his ruins, and I will build it in, as in the days of old. So he says, in that last days I will raise up the tabernacle of David, which is the Israelites, the twelve tribes, all right? That is fallen. He says, fallen. And he says, but I will close up the breaches thereof, thereof and raise it up, his ruins, and build it in the days of old. So in the last days, so he said, in the last days, the children of Israel will all be back together as they was in the beginning. He scattered us, but he said in the last days, they will all be back together. All right, go ahead. Right. Twelve. Twelve. That they may possess the remnant of Enum, and of all the heathen, which are called by the name of the Most High that doeth this. So now that he said in the last days, he's going to gather the house of Israel. So those are so in, 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 in uh, Revelation 7, when it says gather the 12 tribes, that's what he's talking about. He's going to rebuild the house of David. Okay. And then verse 12 says that they may possess the remnant of Edom and all the heathen. So once I build the 12 tribes back up, then the, the possession of the remnant of Edom and all the heathens that decide to, to, to wake up, they will clash on with these people that I build back through the house of David. So that's the number that you see that grows in Revelations. Okay? All right. Last precept. Let's go to Revelations 19 and 5. So he shows you right here. I'm going to rebuild the house of David first, which is the 12 Israelites. I mean the 12 tribes of Israel. And then I'll open up the possession of the remnant of Edom. So not all Edom, but the remnant of Edom, the, the people that decided to believe and the heathen that decided to believe the truth. What's the truth? That the 12 tribes of Israel must be gathered at the end because they are the bride to Christ. So now you have to find out what's going on in order to participate in this wedding. Revelations 19 and 5. Well, Revelations 19 and 5, it says, And a voice came out of the throne, saying, Praise our power, and all ye his servants, and ye that fear him, both small and great. Hey, hold on, hold on for one second. Something else I like. skip something. Let's go to back to 7 and 9. We got to finish that out. Sorry about that. Revelation 7 and 9. Let's go. We got to hear this. We said we already read 9 where it says we're going to be coming with white robes from tonight. Oh, that's what it was because I didn't have that uh, I didn't have Amos in here. That's just something that came to head to show y'all about Amos. So that, that kind of threw me, threw me off a little. 7. Go to 7 and 10. So now that we know they're coming with white robes and palms in their head. 
We're at uh, Revelation 7 and 10. And cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our most high, which sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb. And all the angels stood round about the throne, and about the elders and the four beasts, and fell before the throne on their faces, and worshipped the most high. So when all the angels and all the elders, they seen the people coming in the white robes and palms up, they all came before the throne. So all the elders and the four beasts came before the throne and they fell before they faced and worshiped the throne. Right here. You see what they were talking about? Verse 12. Saying, a so be it blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our power forever and ever. So be it. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these things which are arrayed in white robes? And whence came they? So one of the elders, that's it. So they went to the throne, and they all fell and started worshiping the throne so they, so they can ask a question. So you see how they even got to get a question out? They got to worship the throne just to get a question out. And then one of the elders say, Who are these people that are coming in these white robes? Why are they coming? What's their purpose? Go ahead. 14. And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said unto me, These are they which came out of great tribulation, and have washed their robes, and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. So these are the people that went through all the bad tribulations, the poverty, the trials and tribulations, and they have washed their robes white, all right, in the blood of the Lamb. So they got baptized in the blood of the Lamb, they made their robes ready, they made them white. That's what it's saying. They got in the blood of the Lamb. They got baptized in the name. They made their robes white. And they are ready. Because they know this truth. They know they're the wife. Alright. So that's why they're here. Because they know they're the wife. Verse 15. Verse 15. Therefore are they before the throne of the Most High. And serve him day and night in his temple. And he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. Okay, so they said these are the people that dwell with, with that they, 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 they dwell with the Most High and they serve Him day and night in His temple. They don't take no rest. They don't take no break. They always dwell with Him. Alright? Last precept. Let's go to Revelation 19 and 5. Revelations 19 verse 5 chapter 19 and a voice came out of the throne saying praise our power all ye his servants and ye that fear him both small and great and I heard as it were the voice of a great multitude and as the voice of many waters and as the voice of many thunderings of mighty thunderings saying Hallelujah, for the most high power, anointment reigneth. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready. So it says it again right here. All right, give honor because for the marriage of the Lamb is come, and the wife hath made herself ready. Go ahead. We're at eight. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen. For clean and white, for the linen, fine linen is the righteousness of saints. All right, so that's the righteousness of saints is our, our, our clean white garment. All right, so it, it, it's, so it right here uh, stamps that this is our garment for the wedding. All right, verse 9. And he saith unto me, Right blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, These are the true sayings of the Most High. Okay, so now that we know that we are the wife, okay, now Matthew 22 makes sense when he said, I'm going to speak to them in parables. He said, I'm going to speak to them and basically tell y'all, this is 
my wedding. This is our wedding that's coming back. So that's what he was speaking of in verse 22. And he was saying, you are the wife. So now that we found out tonight that through the spirit, the most high looks at us as the wife. All right. Which is the man. And then through the spirit, man is the head of woman, which makes one flesh. So they both become the wife for the lamb, which is Christ. Okay. Now, as we close it out, I'm going to show you guys the, the deception here on why a lot of people don't have this information and what the Romans use it for, okay? And what their purpose is on what they use it for, okay? Uh, I, and this is a bonus, I guess, just to give you this information. Let's go to 1 Timothy 5 and, uh, let's see, 11. Okay, so um, it was it was it was a reasoning though why why this information was left out because they don't want to want you to know that you're connected to Christ like that. So that was Christ's reason when he come back he come back to gather his children, I mean his wife, but then he died to open up the church, all right, and we build uh, the relationship through the church, all right. Go ahead. 11. Father in the world. We're at 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 11. But the younger widows refuse, for when they have begun to wax wanton against Christ, they will marry. So remember, we are widows until you, you are a widow until you realize you are the wife of Christ. So it says right here, the younger widows, they refuse, for when they have begun to to wax wanton against Christ. So when they had begin to go against Christ, they will marry. Marry is G 1060. And this Gam EO. Gam EO G A M E O to wed. So a wedding. So it says right here the, the, the younger widows refuse and they go against Christ and they go out and have weddings. Okay, but that's not what the Most High intended for marriages and stuff to be. See, back in the old days, when you you got a wife, you would go to the dad, and the dad will approve everything, and you get the wife, and then you eat and have a feast. It didn't say to go have this big old glamorous wedding to where you're like a king, to where you're like a queen. But they read these precepts, and they have big old glamorous weddings, and the Bible don't say nothing of. Don't say nothing about weddings. The only wedding that it talks about is ours. It's his. Don't tell you to go do it. So that's something that's against him. It's a custom that the Romans came up with. They decided to come up with that custom. To go out and have weddings and different things like that. He never said weddings for us. But people took that precept in Matthew uh, uh, 25 and 20, I mean 22. And took it for the wrong reason. Why? When he started off, he said, I'm going to start this off by, I'm going to read this in parable. And parable means I'm going to compare this to what's truly going to happen in the kingdom, which is what we all just read at the end when he says the 12 tribes are now gathered as the, the wife. They have the robe. The wedding is ready. Let's go. Okay? So, with that in mind, everybody just know. Know your heritage. Isaiah 54 says, you are the wife in spirit. Once you know that, you are no longer a widow, all right? Don't be ashamed of who you are now, okay? But if you're ashamed of who you are, you are still the widow, okay? Take what's yours. Your heritage is you are the wife of Christ. That's big. That's huge. Big responsibilities and big shoes to fill. But how can you be at the end right here where we're talking about in Revelations 19 and 5, waiting on the Lamb to come back, if you don't know, you are the wife, and the wife comes from the 12 tribes of Israel. All right? So we'll close it out. Ask questions at the end. Let's close it out.